I was thinking, uh, you know, talk about stories. I used to follow my grandmother and mother around and try to get into their purses. It didn't go well. Uh, but I thought, wow, if these purses could talk, what would they say? And so um, this is a piece that came out when I was asking myself that question called Her Purse. The church crouches in the crook of dead man's curve like an old leather catcher's mitt. After the burial, huddled on the hill, my daddy read her will then and there. Now my Jebo didn't have a lot, but what she had is what we got. And she bequeathed me her genuine patent leather pocketbook. A black bag that dangled off her wrist for years. Almost like a growth. A bunion or something. You'd have thought she was hauling state secrets or some other family's fortune, the way she policed that purse. When we said, sit it down, mama, it might as well have been, kiss my ass, in that woman's mind. Well, lumbering back to the car, I didn't get far before I knelt down in the Johnson grass and exposed her Tennessee tote sack to daylight. Chiclet spilled when I clicked open the clasp. A vial of pills rolled out in the grass. Some butter rum lifesavers and a narrow tooth comb. Chapstick, shed keys, an old birthday card she'd gotten from me. Wadded up Kleenex and a half a stick of double mint gum. What I really wanted was that rubber change purse. It's now probably on the floorboard of the hearse. It was red with a slit down the middle. She'd pinch it open, take her pointer and thumb and then press some coins down into my palm at offering time when they passed the plate at church. But it was there in the side zip pocket where I found a secret she thought she'd buried. An old love letter from a farmhand, Howard MacDaniel. I love you too scrawled in the margin of the yellowed note. Her purse gaped open there in the grass, the contents exposed. Y'all, I, I felt like I'd stolen her clothes. This woman who swore she had never been naked before her own husband.